planet 8064616-0110. The latest stop in our search for sentience, our pursuit of perspective. We have found one advanced civilization in the species known as corporations, but are there others? Most life on this planet exists at the level of genetic sentience. Take, for example, these hexapedal arthropods in the Northern Hemisphere. Their behavior is pre-programmed into their DNA. They make their homes underground in tunnels beneath the autotroph's own habitat. Each being performs a specific role. These ones are in charge of construction. These ones are in charge of finding food. They have no individual sentience, no hopes, dreams or fears. Only the group is aware of itself. The largest of the genetic sentience are these bipedal heterotrophs called employees. They make their homes underground in tunnels beneath the corporation's own habitat. This is a species worthy of some study. The employee's bilateral body is endoskeletal with a thin protective layer covering a mixture of meat and high-pressure liquid. They are pentadactyl but have only one heart and one stomach. With just one support column and only two feet, the employees fall over easily. We observed most employees have a limited range of senses. Their vision is binocular. Two distinct viewpoints are combined to give them a sense of depth. But even so, they are half-blind, able to detect just 0.0035% of the electromagnetic spectrum. Employees live on average for 0.7 centuries in local time, and this has clearly been a problem for their symbiotic partners who live much longer. We have observed the corporations supplying employees with chemicals, presumably to lengthen their lifespan. Every species has one evolutionary advantage, and the employees is here, a small buccal cavity on the front of the cranium. Strangely, this organ performs many different functions at once, including respiration, ingestion and reproduction but its most interesting use is communication. Unlike corporations, employees have not evolved to communicate telepathically. Instead, they rely on an inefficient process to transmit and receive data, converting it into sound waves. Muscles inside the pulmonary system and the buccal cavity contract to emit a high-frequency pattern of sound waves, which are then detected by a dedicated receiver on the cranium. These waves then appear to be converted back to the initial electromagnetic signals. It is a strange solution to the communication problem. Watch these transmissions, which we have received most recently from the surface of the planet. They appear to show an employee of great importance possibly a senior contact between the corporations and their endosymbionts. Eight zero six four six one six. 0110 is a very noisy world. The employees have one other defining feature, a relatively large cerebral cortex. It is so large, it consumes a fifth of their energy budget and forces their young to be born prematurely. We had hoped that this organ would be the source of high sentience, holding the potential for advanced civilization. But our analysis reveals that the transmitters within use a simple binary firing system, which puts a major limitation on their understanding of their environment. To the employee, if something is true, 
its negation must be false. And so the basic workings of the universe remain forever invisible to them. And yet, this low sentience has one major advantage. It makes them perfect endosymbionts for the corporations. Employees have no individual sentience. Only the group is aware of itself. But how did this symbiosis come to be? How do the corporations cooperate with the employees? And does life on this planet have the potential to advance beyond a Category 2 civilization? We have much more to discover in the next section.